Hello, I'm Todd Smith, Division Supervisor with Fremont County Ambulance, and I'd like to welcome you to the training on the new ambulances that we're getting ready to put in service for Fremont County Ambulance. Uh, today we're going to be going through a lot of the highlighted features of this new ambulance, uh, the new engine design with the 6.4 diesel engine, the new cot, the right height of the ambulance, the new entryways to the ambulances, some of the safety precautions that we need to take care of. We'll give you a full run through on how to operate the cot, the lighting systems, uh, we'll overview the radio system again and its location and why we've configured it the way we have. So sit back, enjoy, and uh, we'll get you a run through on this ambulance and once we get through the whole entire staff we'll uh, have this rig up and running and in service. The diesel particulate system on these vehicles is new for the 2010 model. And what it does is it's part of the exhaust gas recirculation system. Basically the soot or the carbon from the engine is brought into the particulate filter. Once the filter has become full, the vehicle then puts raw fuel down into that filter. The engine idles up and it goes through a burn process or an incinerator type process and burns off that carbon or soot. Because of this, the vehicle will go into regen on the instrument cluster. To us as EMTs, what is important is when we're on scene or when the vehicle is at idle, we, that we set the emergency brake. To press the brake down, the high idle, high idle kicker will kick up on the vehicle and it will take over from the process in there. You don't have to do anything beyond that. Um, the other thing we need to be aware of as EMTs is that we don't need these sit on scenes for extended periods of time. Hour, hour and a half tops and then we need to get them off. We do have some football standbys in that in the winter. If it's warm enough outside, obviously don't run it. Uh, anything below 40 degrees, go ahead and, and run it. We're going to have to do that for our standbys. But we want to try and not have excessive idle times on these vehicles. You know, get them back in the station, get them on the highways. If the vehicle is going through the regen process uh, while you're finishing up with your run or whatnot, simply park it outside, set the brake, let it finish its regen process, and then go back to normal operation. When going through and checking the engine for oil and transmission levels, you'll notice that all of these service areas are highlighted in yellow, either the dipsticks or the caps. These are showing the engine oil and the transmission fluid. The engine coolant uh, cap is also highlighted in yellow, and the power steering as well and the engine cooling takes the special gold cooling do not add the uh, green coolant to this and this is the full level on the side of the tank when cold moving right along we're going to introduce you to the cot um, as you may see there's some new features to it as the previous picture showed, you can blow out the back window if you don't have it in the correct position. If you see it's in the upright position and the cruise will bring it down to the lowering position, the extended length actually gives us leverage with the cot, uh, especially some of our vertically challenged folks where they can uh, have a little more leverage on getting that out. Um, same safety devices, same releases that were in our old ambulances, same safety position once you go out and go out of load. This displays the uh, tail portion in the upright position you release the handle it goes to the next position on down and so forth you squeeze the handle to bring it back up or hold it down and go through the locking positions the handles a little different on the cot you just give it a squeeze push it forward and it'll rotate out and to do the same to come back up Our lifting procedure for the head is the same with the hydraulics underneath. And then as you'll see, you're also able to release it and lower that uh, portion down as well to get into the tighter spaces uh, that we have to at times. And it does do the locking in the different positions, so if you need to get leverage for lifting underneath it, you're able to. Taking the cot down uh, to the full down position is the same as it used to be. You press it down and push the lock forward. This can be done as a one-person maneuver. Lift the cot up to its full angle. Release the handle. 
and on down to the floor it'll come. Once it's in the full down position then you can go ahead with the cruise using your lifting procedures and bring it up and then as always as a safety anytime we've got a patient on there make sure you take it on a load. The first and secondary down positions are the same as they were with our old cot and operates exactly the same. Going down and then you can go ahead and the cruise can take it back up um, using good body mechanics. Uh, to go back in the ambulance we need to put it into the load position and then we lift uh, and assist it with uh, two people uh, going back in. We didn't do that in this video because we didn't have any weight on it, but it would be a good idea to make sure that you assist it. And first and foremost, make sure, once that's loaded in, that you put that tail in the upright position, otherwise we could have damage to the window. some of the design features of the new ambulance right off the bat the uh, ambulance has a taller ride height which allows it for a bigger box um, interior features layouts a little different the center console um, is a solid piece um, siren controls are there phone and uh, of course your uh, radio controls and we mounted the radio to the left to access the driver and uh, it's up on the dash up there easy for you to see that's kind of the interior cab features of the ambulance. Lighting is a little different. We use all LED lights. Um, as you can see, the light bar flashing and the different patterns that are available. This just randomly does it. These are the wig wags on the front of the vehicle. Um, we're not able to utilize the lights anymore, so we actually had to add a, a wig wag module into it. Clearance lights coming into the cab. Um, and you'll see the uh, shallower walkway going up in and then uh, clearance lights coming into the uh, top there and those are the scene lights that are like we've always had we've got them in the back as well and you can see the spacious uh, of the cab the spaciousness in there that cot can also be moved over to a center mount uh, if you look in there you can see the floor drops coming around the side you see the clearance lights on the side or the scene lights and also a sneak peek at the new cabinetry another photo of the wheel well with the oxygen bottle mounted the uh, timer is for the lights on the interior of the cab, just turn the timer on. There's the gloves, the gloves are mounted above the door. Our two new cabs in the side. To the right we carry our tools and the inverter, and then our backboards and scoop stretchers. The mirrors you'll notice are a little bit large, uh, can extend out for trailer tow capacity. And probably one of the neatest features that we've added this year uh, is the uh, child safety seat. Um, there are parameters on this. Uh, the child has to be over one year of age and 27 pounds up to 50 and if you look there's a label on the front of the seat that will guide you. Have one attendant open it up while the other attendant brings the child in. Place the child on the seat and then bring the straps around. You'll want to make sure that this is located right in the uh, center of the chest and sternum uh, nipple line like you would do with CPR. The bottom straps buckle in and then you secure them down by pulling up on the side. You pull the straps up in the middle just above the mounting and then you pull them up on the side to make sure it's a snug and secure fit. And then we're ready to rock and roll. Moving on to the airway bag. In the uh, center compartment, we're going to have the non-rebreather masks, nasal cannulas, uh, BP cuffs, glucometer, airway, obviously the oxygen, the C collars. Um, in the uh, mesh pouches down below, you have your orals and nasals, then your uh, combi tubes, your ALS supplies, and your needle decompression kits. I'd like to thank everybody for attending, and uh, been a great addition of 10-minute training.